In this video, I played another deck that is extremely good, but almost nobody is actually playing it. So just for you, I made a deck guide and during the gameplay, I explained all my actions and my thought process. Get ready for another episode of Sweaty Saturday. And the name is still work in progress. The deck we're playing this week is the exact opposite of what we did last time. Instead of big overarm stats in your face, we're going to play a deck built around the elusive keyword with Zoe and Teemo. The good news is this deck is very easy to play and even easier to win with. The bad news is that, well, it's an elusive deck. Huh? This deck plays Teemo as a one-man elusive that gets value when you hit the Nexus, and Zoe is the other champion as a one-man elusive that also gets value when you hit the Nexus. Puff caps are extra damage, and star charts help get some extra units on the field. Every other unit in this deck is also elusive except for the Wandering Shepherd. You want to give a weapon to one of your elusives so they hit a little harder, especially with that scout weapon. And that's really what it boils down to. On one hand, we have elusive units, and on the other hand, we have protection spells. Pill Cascade, Sun Blast Vigor, Purple Berry Shake, and Battle Bonds all do a fantastic job of making sure our units stay alive to chip away at the Nexus. The reason this deck is so much better right now though is the Sudden Surge. For 2 mana you grow a unit to a 5-5, dodging removal and dealing even more damage. You want to play this deck for free wins against Pantheon decks and to beat almost every Vein deck, except the Gwen and Zed variants. You're even against Seraphine, Ioni and Targon, but very unfavored against the Noxus and the Shadow Island versions. In the Mulligan, I always keep my champions because you need a turn 1 play. Half the reason this deck is strong is because the decks you're favored against can and start removing units until like turn 4. At which point, spells like Sudden Surge and Battle Bonds turn into fantastic answers. And speaking of spells, you never keep them in the mulligan. Besides your champions, I keep Battle Commando, Esmus, and the Lodestone. You really can't go wrong with this deck. Play your elusive units, protect them from removal, and deal small amounts of damage to the Nexus until you win. Don't forget to like the video and let me know in the comments what deck you want to see next. Okay, so this is recording for Sweaty Saturday. I'm still gonna be interacting with chat from time to time, but my focus is going to be on just giving my thought process, explaining the deck, and showing what I can do against the decks I'm playing against. Hey guys, if you're looking for tournaments, learning calls, and a best of three ban helper, check out Mastering Rune Terra in the link below, and you can use coupon code SNUI for 10% off of subscriptions. Now, Zoe Teemo is supposed to be very good into most Demacia lists that don't have Gwen or Zed. So we really want a one drop because they don't have any removal for Teemo until they get their single combats, stuff like that, which is usually way too late into the game. So very good that we draw Teemo, but we're going to need more than just spells, right? This is what I feel the worst part about this deck is where you don't draw any units and only draw your protection spells. So you kind of have to go like all in one unit. Flight is great, but using a buff like Battle Bonds on Flight will just reset it when you draw Flight again. When did Teemo Zoe become legit? It's a pretty good counter against the current meta because it has like 70 to 80% win rate against a lot of Pantheon decks and against almost all the Masha decks. It does uh, pretty well against Seraphine, Ionia, and Targon. It does very poorly against Seraphine Noxus and Seraphine Shadow Owl. I believe the win rate against Seraphine Shadow Owl is literally like 20% or something, which, uh, yeah, kind of makes sense. I like the combat really here. Now, they... Okay, so they have to stun. Not really that much we could... One thing we could have done was use uh, Purple Berry Shake here, but I think this is fine. That's, a, that's an interesting scenario, actually, right? If we use Purple Berry Shake here... We would lose the card, and we'd get to push three more damage. Is that worth it? I don't think so. The play here will probably be only playing Esmus, right? We play Esmus, we want to block with the Tutu. So by playing Esmus here, we guarantee that a Chine will land here. Okay, they have one mana. We might need... Kind of surprising they didn't use this to kill the Teemo. What does that mean? Is there a reason they wouldn't use this to just kill the Teemo? That is something I should have played around as well, by the way, from the start. So we'll do this. Can we take nine damage here? I don't think we can. We're being run over a little bit too fast. So we can do that. We can even use the Pill Casket on Teemo here for another block. But I think this will... Okay. 
so we want the chime to land here and not on the flight well then has four cards okay land here close not quite you best believe I don't play the dawn has arrived behold the divine power of the sun okay so Timo gets stunned again this is the problem with developing obviously Timo did not really get any hits in Interesting. I wonder how different this game would have been if they didn't have two stuns or we played around it better. So we have to attack here. We buff this. Flight goes back into the deck. Yeah, I mean, we, we got it back in the mulligan and it's definitely harming us a lot. Um, but that's fine. As long as we survive this turn, we should still be okay. And I think uh, if we draw Sudden Surge here, we we might find a way for lethal. But yeah, the owl cats are great at blocking. This is why I really like the Bandle Commando against a lot of decks. For the prince. For king and country. Oh yeah, well that's painful. Uh, all right, so we'll just pass here. Feel the sun's glory. We do what is right. Okay. I mustn't stop. All right, so we have to block you here. I think this is always the play. And then we can do this here, making it survive. Teemo kills the Garen. It's really awkward that we have to use our card like this, right? Because we want to be pushing damage instead. But this is, uh, this is a way for us to stay in the game. And we'll play this card. Let's play this here, actually. Okay, um... I think we have to attack here. Can we get lethal here? This is gonna be 9 damage. 9... 10. We're one off lethal, basically. Because if we do this here on the Asmus, this will grow to 5. We deal 10, this is 11. But if we develop, this gets stunned, and we can't get another blocker on the field. We have to if they play another daybreak unit, we're screwed. We should develop. I'm not sure if that's true. I don't think so. All right, I'll t I, 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 I'm not sure. It's so close. We can pop off this weapon here. Yeah, the, uh, like we get punished by another daybreak unit. It's a problem. Better get their stuns out now. I mean, the thing is, they only need to play another Daybreak unit, and then Leona stuns this. And this is the card that would give us another unit, right? What's up, by the way, Jinden? Yeah, let's try for lethal then. Maybe there is a way. There's like some really weird outs here. Right. All right, let's try to go for it. So th does this mean that playing this on the Esmos last turn was incorrect? I believe I top decked. I, I, I top decked the Lodestone, didn't I? Actually, no, I didn't. I had that in my hand. We had lethal, but open the sudden certain. No, we didn't. We didn't. We were one off. <laughs> it just feels so weird to do this because Fly just goes back into the deck, right? All right. So we did find a way to put them on Guiding Touch in order to win the game. It's basically if they have Guiding Touch, they win. If they don't, we win. Let's see it. Our sun will not set today. And there we go. Game number one in the pockets. That, that was a really rough turn to play there. It, it kind of goes to show that decks like this look super straightforward. We always have these really important setting up turns that can let you win games in a strange way sometimes. So, uh, yeah, nice.
the, the, the weapon, playing the weapon, the lodestone on the Esmus, and then giving the plus two to the bird was the best play there, for sure. So what I'm wondering is, was the previous turn using the combat reel on Esmus the wrong play? And I think it was. Yeah, this is what the people voted for, for Sweaty Saturday. I gave five options, and this is the one with the most votes. So I already played a bit. I did a good amount of preparing for this deck. I played about, I want to say, between 15 and 20 games to get an understanding. And now I'm here to uh, to show you guys what I know. Obviously, last week when I played Victor Riven, that is a deck I played a lot before that as well. So I feel a lot more confident on a deck like that and making a guide for it. But here I'm like just in the process of learning it so I can be able to give content on it and make a guide. So this is a horrible hand. This is a really, really bad. Uh, this is also not a good matchup. But... Um, this series exists just to give like an overview of the deck, right? It, it's not to just stop opponents every single game with the best deck imaginable. It's not about showing how powerful the deck is. It's about showing what it can do, the ins and outs, and then, uh, you know, learning together. I would cut Kelp Maidens for Bird. I've considered that. I actually thought the Junk Construct was a really interesting choice as well. Beware, this is a great draw. I really like the Bandle Commando for giving you blockers. When I was practicing, I had a game where it was just this with the Scout weapon. And I just had so many hungry Owlcats and they were basically the reason why I won. Just constant Owlcats. Alright, that's a lot of flights. I think we're uh we're actually doing quite alright here though. Opponent missing turn three. Pretty good. So we can do this. I like this. But is it the best play we have? If we do this, we can get a weapon to buff the owlcat to three attack. Alright, well that's the only choice we have, really. Guys, you should have seen Sunny play Victor Riven, his signature deck was hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, last week when I played Aegis, I had a couple of misplays with my signature deck. Uh, a couple. A couple. So one upside we get here is that the Sudden Surge is now active. Now the question is, do we want to take 4 damage? Or do we want to use the Sudden Surge to block here? And I don't think we want to block. I think with the Scout Weapon, we can set up a, a really, really nasty turn. So let's see what happens. That is interesting. Okay. So we keep the scout weapon. Yeah, I guess we're racing now. Huh. Not really a downside to this. Eddie Miguel, thank you for the prime sub. Appreciate that. I would have liked the scout weapon because if we put that here, it would have just been like 12 damage, eventually. I'll take the pan here. The, 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 the card that's the scariest is Gwen, so the fact they don't have that is pretty fantastic. Playing slower is uh, is interesting here. I, I yeah, I guess uh, I guess I could just block with the sudden surge then. I've had success against aggro when they're just straight on that board and then I get to keep mine. Okay. So they have one card left and we're at five HP, so we're not in decimate range. That's always pretty great. So next turn we should just have lethal. If we survive this turn, I'm confident we can get lethal. Uh, that's seven. Yeah, this is just lethal, right? All right, that should be GG. So we can do this first. And then we do this. And then we have uh, a lethal swing like that. GG. Kind of weird. Uh, strange hand. Opponent had triple onlooker. Double fervor. So I guess they were just lacking units. Really strange. 
Yeah, but Nishu definitely gone for trades. That was strange. Weird game, but I'll, I'll take a win. I'll take a win. You mean there's a Seraphine deck in my collection? Um, yeah, I uh, I usually take screenshots of the deck so I can use them in the videos. This is a really good hand. I just think we want to use the Kelp Maidens here. They do have a ping, so Teemo plus Battle Commander should be great. Don't forget Strike Spells. They, they, they come online too late. Strike Spells are just not really uh, a good way to beat this deck. Okay, so the play here should be... This is actually kind of hard. Do we want to go Esmus to make Teemo a 2-2, or do we want to play Battle Commander so we can potentially play Blocker next turn? I think I like the Esmus more. Yeah, Esmus can make this a 2-3. Night Oh, that's pretty good. All right. So work is uh, pretty much cut out for us. So I like doing this here. So we can block this, but then we are open to a... Yeah, let's just do it. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm... Uh... I think I'm good to trade here. Next turn we have Vandal Commando plus Sudden Surge potentially. This should be really good. If they try to use unspeakable horror, we could just win. You best believe I don't play. You you get really low though by units just by decks just developing a bunch of units. Uh, do we want to do it now? There are two mana still. I think we have to develop here. We have four cards. We don't really want to play around unspeakable. We'll we'll go for one less power so we can get the. Uh, they do have it. They do have it. Okay, punished. Definitely big punish. Yeah, that does suck. I could have played around that too. I was thinking about it the entire time. I, I still think this is fine. Um, but yeah. Oh, true. This is some big units. Eleven damage. I think we have to do it like this then. Next turn, yeah, this has to be it. Next turn we can probably get lethal, right? I think we have lethal. Oh, Play this. To the ignorant. Ugh, okay, that's really rough that they have this. That might stop us from getting lethal. Okay, let's see here. This can grow to six, but we want to use you here. Um, seven. So we want to do this first and then use the shrooms after so we level team, all right? I guess we should spread out the buffs and buff that instead. 12 damage, so it is lethal with double pokey. Oh, do they have the, the, the silence? If they have the silence, then we... Okay. So it's not lethal, sadly. Oh, Ooh, that's rough, dude. Damn, the Unto Dusk might make all the difference here. Okay. Okay, so we have to hope they draw some shrooms. They have 26 puff caps. Don't do another Doom Beast, please. Okay. Alright, let's see. Draw two shrooms. Two shrooms, come on. Oh! Hey, yo, Bagitka, thank you for the sub. Victor laugh as they draw two shrooms. Dude, no way. No way. The moon is our queen. The night, her kingdom. What if they have another unto dusk? We could just wait, right? If it's unto dusk. The full moon awakens the soul. 
If they unto dusk, they can also draw shrooms, right? Oh, but we just die. It doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Pray, pray, pray. Okay, so that's pretty funny. The Tebow the, the level up actually mattered there. The sequencing was good. The sequencing was great. So let's see if it's enough. We actually won. It's unbelievable. Oh my god. There's no way. <laughs> Good game. Yeah, this deck does it all, huh? <laughs> GG. It's not it's not how I've played Rune Terra ever. Okay. This is a deck that runs Quicksand. Overall, I still feel like this should be rather favored. We really, really want a one drop. So is it even correct to keep the Bandle Commando? I would either kick everything or keep the Bandle Commando. Bro, that video made my day you don't even know. It was it was so much fun to make. Oh. Oh. All right, well, sometimes you get hands like this. This, this brings me back to the Fuhrer Shen days, where it was either a handful of units that you can't protect or a handful of spells that you can't use. Okay. Uh, we'll play this first. I think I care less about that dying. We can uh, we can play the commando as a two three. Put the weapon on here, and then potentially just pokey stick this. This becomes a four five. That makes me happy. Okay, I think we're looking okay here. Surprisingly, this being a 4-5, getting an owl cat to just pop the, the sand, not too bad. So this next turn will probably be Pokey Stick. And we don't even have to play the owl cat yet. I will the power from the desert. Uh okay, we'll pass. I go, I go! Watch me! I think we're okay racing. We could take this three. Makes it less likely that Zerat Ping snipes us. So if we play the Owl Cat here. Okay, Zoe's good. If we play Zoe, she gets sniped though. So we play Owl Cat. The Esmus gets sniped. I'm happy with that. And then we play Zoe. Next turn, we just rip Sudden Surge maybe. Yeah, let's see. If we play this, it's five, six, twelve. We we can actually get lethal here, right? Hmm. What if we do this into this? Then we don't have mana. I think this is always correct, though. My, the play I was thinking about was using sudden search on Zoe and then playing this. But, um, the desert. I mean, it's pretty likely they'll use quicksand anyway, right? Okay, let's just keep mana open for uh, the search. We grow you to four attack. You're big enough. This should be a fine attack. I'm a little lost on when exactly the sun just pops normally now. It used to be like turn six. Now it's like seven or eight. Yeah, this is fine, because we keep our units. I think we want to just keep the sudden surge. Okay, we just really don't have to do anything. We don't even need to develop into that. We can just sit here with these two spells and then threaten lethal again next turn. We can just pass, pass, pass. Turn seven? I mean... They're not really close enough for this. We'll, we'll, we'll just wait until they use Rite of Arcane. We'll protect our units with the Battle Bonds, since it's permanent. Yeah, I think I'm down to Battle Bond, the Esmus plus. Yeah, thanks, game. Oh, wow. I mean, this is fine because it protects Esmus already. The thing with using it on Esmus. Yeah, maybe this is better, huh? This lets us develop the two as well. Okay, we'll do that. 
I don't think it matters because we we really only have one target for the sudden search next turn anyway, because this is five, this is four, so we get no benefit from this. The thing with battle bonds is obviously that it stays for a turn. So this should be fine. Now that Zared is dead, we can safely develop the Shade Stalker as well. Darkness hides in my path. Nothing will stand no landmark is popping. I think we're just good here. Sure. Just so we have mana for. I think we have mana for everything anyway. Uh, Zoe has the weapon. That's a, that's a 19 damage swing with the elusives here. Looking for quicksand? <laughs> X Teeny, thank you for the prime sub. And the glorious Victor laugh. This deck is an actual deck. Yeah, you should look at win rates. If you ban Seraphine, it should be it should be really good, yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, we had four more damage. <laughs> The win rates against Pantheon decks with this are like above 70%, but uh, the sample sizes are not massive. Look at me, I'm the control deck now. <laughs> exactly. With my buff spells. That's not my elusive streamer. Okay, listen, hold on. Let me pull this up for all the people that are unaware. Hold on. Look, what deck would you like to see covered for the next Sweaty Saturday? Teemo Zoe. Now, Right after I made this, uh, this post, I realized I should have probably specified that this is aggro, elusive, plus buffs, and, you know, Misfortune Swain is also basically pirate aggro. I, I wonder how many people voted for this, thinking, oh, sweet, a, a Teemo deck. I do feel a little bit bad for that. Since when are we in a democracy? Only on YouTube. I know, you know I don't care about the Twitch people. Come on. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I love you guys. <laughs> Now we just have to wait three months for next seasonal. So yeah, I had a really fun idea for next seasonal. I was going to ask like Majin Bay or Ikado to like coach me, have like a rocky montage of me getting better with the decks that they usually play. But we'll see how that how that pans out. OK, so this is supposed to be a very favorite matchup. Actually, no, I don't think it is actually. I don't think when Vayne is it, it should be about 50 50. People expect perfection a lot, and it's really not possible. If you actually try to find misplays well, you find them everywhere, even for people like Lobster or Allen. CCGs are just not actually possible to be perfect at. Yeah, it's so dynamic. There's so many different lines that would not only like change the entire course of the game, but also like in, in that specific moment. It, it, it's crazy. Let's get to work. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this. I really don't like flight early. I saw your Nor Nor deck and was wondering whether you had any success, and it's definitely a bit of a meme deck. Okay, so here's the thing, right? If we play Esmus now and we attack, we instantly draw the Chime, and I'm not sure how happy I am if it lands on the Wandering Shepherd. Uh... <sighs> I think I just attack here and take it slow. Better to do this now. Wonder if it's even correct to ping that one instead of one of the birds. Probably not. Oh god. Uh okay. So if we had a one drop. Plus the weapon. I wonder how different this game would have been. Okay, there's Zoe. Zoe's pretty good. You can fix anything with anything. I'll prove it. Hmm. I think we pretty much have to play the weapon master here. The weapon on Z we do activate the sudden search for next turn, but it sucks that we lose the flight to our deck. Yeah, OTK next turn, that's what I'm thinking too. So we just have to set up most damage possible. And it's probably like this, right? 
Zoe dies though. Yeah. Anyone seen any sheep around here? I uh lost mine. Alright, bye bye board. <laughs> Back into the deck. Oh. Oh, they have sharp side in this deck. Yeah, so that makes this even more unlikely to be a win. I think it's still like weirdly winnable in a way. Nothing gets between okay, not anymore. Yeah, what if we play one of these? Win is a really good one here. Eight, four. I think we have to if we do this now we can't win what if we just do this and then we have two blockers they pull with these two is four three is nine ah, that doesn't work It's, uh, I think we're not out of it yet, but it's uh, it's very close. Yeah, they had a really good draw. That's not great. If they rally here, it's over over. I'm just playing cards here. If they have something, they have something, right? If they have another sharp side, then so be it. Do we attack with this? I'm not playing around sharp side right now. We can't really play around anything. If we do stall, we have a way to win the turn after this because by shuffling his flight and getting it back, we can actually maybe win with Harazi. But if they have second sharp side, there's no way. Okay, I think that is something we... No, we can't beat, right? It's lethal with this. Okay, so attack with the scout, but the flight was wrong then. The only way it was correct if we drew another one drop, but now it's just lethal. I mean, good effort, good effort. Attack with the flight was wrong there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess it was always wrong, because even if they have sharp side, I needed that one blocker to be able to be good next turn and then try to win with Harazi. Good learning experience there. Uh, this is a 50-50 matchup, but I, I do think we drew slightly below average. And they had a really good curve. But either way, um, can't win them all. Challenger kind of kick any loser deck. Uh, this is 50-50, according to stats. New name for the list. Hit Kiridi for the LF, thank you for the tier one. help from watching you almost daily for almost half a year. Now it's just masters left. Cheers. Snowy party, snowy party. Yo, that's awesome. Go get that master. All right, so here we have the dreaded 20% win rate matchup. This one is not good. This one is real bad. Oh, we're on this timeline. Giorno, thank you for the prime sub. No, we need some minions, man. I kept this for Quietus and Vile Feast. Okay, there we go. Get him, Teemo. Get in there. Got him. Got him, good. This is why I kept the shake. <laughs> oh, oops, my bad. Never asked you, do you like new ranked LP gain? Yeah, I love it. The system is great. Yeah. So any abusing elusives. Uh, Shut up. Democracy. The people have voted. The people wanted to see this deck for YouTube. I'm giving them what they want. With Scout. Actually, Scout's probably not even that good. Scout band were still... Well, no, we had the pill cascade, I guess. Yes, 
Oh, life steal. All right. I bear a message from. Oh, hey, what's that? I wonder if we beat that. I don't feel so good about it. Uh, I guess it's okay. I don't think it matters. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna attack with the tutus and we're gonna double pale them. The only way to get rid of life steal. Giving team a scout because he is canonically battle scout. Yep, it is the way. I I, I don't think we ever beat uh, life steal, but it feels really bad using the buff like this. Actually, does it? Eh, this doesn't even feel that bad. Sure, we deal two. We'll take it. Yeah, that life steal is too strong, my dude. No, no, no. Okay. Sure. Bye, Timo. Honestly, could be worse, but they're still at 17 HP. Not a bad draw. Okay, we'll play these two out. We'll wait for the chimes. Stick. One each. Mama's home. Mother Moon Veil me. Alright. So how are we gonna win? It's like this is a really, really bad matchup, but I, I feel like we might be able to get there. So we'll do this. And still have answers because everything is discounted by a million. Is it worth using this? This way we still deal... I think it's worth using that. I don't think we have much better use of it. We'll buff it up out of Mystic Shot and High Note range. We want to buff up this. Let's go wide, spread it out. Okay, that is good damage. Uh, somehow we brought our opponent down to 8 HP, which I feel pretty good about. I just use weapon to keep it later for protection of larger units. Is there a way? Yeah, okay, with Seraphine there is. Hmm, yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. I can see that. Whoa. Elusive. And Challenger, those are pretty good. Okay. Oh man, that's 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 pretty rough. Uh, potentially could have gone for this. Actually, that might have been better. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, where did this come from? Okay. I feel like we got close there, though, right? So this was a misplay, actually. I should have gone for the for the snake. I should have gone for the snake. Well, this mama is the beast mama. Oh man, you're kidding. They have two elusive blockers. <sighs> they can block too. Okay, let's go for it. All right, Sudden Surge, I need a miracle here. It's already impressive that we're getting close, to be honest. Stay back. You're so you're telling me that every single thing they did was generated. 
Wow. Wait, really though? Moonlight Affliction. The Lifesteal? And this to get Elusive and Challenger? They were... Huh. I don't really know what to do here. If we do this, they go down to five. I don't think it's, oh, six. I'm good at math. So with this being at one, we still get to block here, kill our own units. All right, GG. I feel like we can really, really close there. If at any point our opponent didn't generate an answer, we would have won that, right? They didn't just generate an answer, they generated several. Yeah. Like every single thing they generated there was quite good. Like Allure getting Challenger Elusive, that means they get to kill one of our blockers on attack. And they get to block one when we're attacking. Or they get to kill one when they're attacking, they get to kill one when we're attacking. Thinking outside the box, Zillion Victor, Time Bomb Printer, One Two Pop, Meta Shifter, Not a Quitter, Fighting for LPP, Snoop.